My dad stopped at an airport because I'd begged him to. He was afraid to let me go. I wasn't afraid to go. I was tremendously uh, excited. My knees were, were shaking, and then the instructor or the uh, pilot thought I was afraid, but this wasn't the case. I was just so thrilled at doing this. The thrill to me was just being up in the air, and I, I think I've experienced that the rest of my life. For powers, the war meant getting out of the Depression. His strongest memory of those years is a five-minute airplane ride. For Nielsen, the experience of war was a direct one, which started with the German invasion of Norway. At this time, Selmer Nielsen was only an 11-year-old boy. But what happened in the war affected his whole life. In 1850. In uh, 1940, the Germans occupied Norway, our country. And in 1941, Russians came here to my uh, parents' house. And my parents started to work for the Allies, that is to say, against Germany. I didn't really understand what this was all about. I knew that the uh, Russian were her, although I was a little boy. And my father and the family, they collected uh, informations for the Russians about German activities, uh, U-boats, uh, airplanes and uh, everything like that. They had to be ready to help the Allied fleet, the convoys that went to Murmansk, with uh, weapons and ammunition. Murmansk is 200 miles by sea from the Nilsons Fjord. Such information as the Nilsons and the Russian agents were able to transmit to Russia was vital to the British convoys that took the most dangerous route of the war to supply their Russian allies. Because of frequent surprise raids by the Germans, the Russian agents could not live all the time in the Nilsons' home. They lived out here in the winter time when it was difficult to get into the mountains because of the snow. They had to live as near the sea as possible so that there uh, wouldn't be any tracks after them in the snow. That's the cave where they used to keep the radio transmitter that they used to send messages to Russia with. They're right under where those two seagulls are. One time uh, I remember an ordinary fishing smack arrived with Germans on board, on raid here. And you can see that it's about 100 yards from here to the jetty. And the Germans didn't show themselves on deck until the boat was at the jetty. And they started running towards the hose. And the Russians were sitting down and having dinner with us at the table. So they didn't have time to run up into the mountains. So we just had to hide them, uh, put them down into the cellar there. But the trapdoor can be seen, and so that, that it shouldn't be seen. But my mother took a wooden wash basket and put it on top of the trapdoor to hide it. And then I took some clean clothes and threw them into the basin and started to wash them. And the Germans came in and, uh, and searched the house. But I didn't find anything because uh, she was standing there washing clothes. So it was all at that time. I found absolutely nothing. The Germans burnt the whole of northern Norway in... Uh, in the autumn of 44, and we had to run away to the mountains and uh, live in, in those mud huts. And, and the Russian went back, uh, back, back home to Russia. And uh, a couple of my relatives went with them over there because they joined uh, the fight against Germany. <laughs> 